Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. Peace be with you. My friends, we gather today in our second Sunday of Advent, our journey towards Christmas, with that wonderful refrain we'll be using in our own lives and hearts, come, Lord Jesus, come. That is our, our plea, that Jesus continue to fill us more deeply. We pause to call to mind to the Lord any way that we have impeded or halted the presence of Jesus in our lives through our decisions which may not have been right. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up unto a high mountain, Zion, herald of good tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. 
Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the youth with care. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, Be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of, Jer Je of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the tongues of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. the opening words of our first scripture today from Isaiah, that wonderful comfort, comfort my people, O Lord. That is the message Isaiah received from God to give to the people, to bring comfort to them, to bring some meaning to their lives, to bring some hope to them. And that certainly is the message of our Advent as we journey forward to the graces once again of the birth of Jesus, to comfort our people, to comfort one another. And that was the role of St. John the Baptist as we heard in the gospel today. St. John was sent to bridge the Old Testament promises, the prophets, all the promises into the New Testament times when Jesus would come and be the fulfillment of all those promises. And so John, curiously enough, is out in the desert living this very austere life. His meals were locusts and wild honey, not exactly what most people would find inviting. He wore very austere clothing and he was preaching conversion of heart and sorrow for our sins. And his baptism was simply a sign of that repentance and forgiveness of sins. And yet, what do we hear in the gospel today from Mark? Many, many people were going out of Jerusalem to hear and listen to John, to have their hearts touched and they were repenting and being baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. And you say to yourself, that seems strange. Here they are in Jerusalem, living comfortable lives in their homes, having enough of everything, food, clothing, whatever they would need, and yet it wasn't enough. Their hearts were yearning and longing for something more. And so they're drawn out to the desert, an austere place, to a prophet speaking an austere message. And they, heart, their hearts were filled because all of us are looking for that inner peace which comes about by acknowledging our dependence on our loving God. So the image about how we uh, have the different mountains lowered, the valleys filled, the highway made straight, it's all about us getting everything in order in our lives so that our lives are living a straight path forward. And so here we are coming up to Christmas, 
the most extraordinary, unusual Christmas in our lives with our COVID-19 hovering around and new restrictions being placed on us. But what is a wonderful gift is that Christmas is the one holiday and feast day and season that focus primarily on the home and on the family, which means we don't have to go anywhere to get ready for Christmas in that sense, because all of it is done at home. Isn't that right? People putting up Christmas lights outside of their homes, people putting up decorations inside their homes, Christmas trees, a marvelous situation this year, people are longing for something more authentic. And so the sale of real live Christmas trees is off the charts. Many of us have the artificial ones at home, they're very nice, but they don't take any labor to make them ever more beautiful. They're already, already decorated, the lights are in place. All we have to do is put it up, plug it in, and we're all there. But the real Christmas tree, what does it involve? All of our family members participating in that ritual of decorating the tree. And we can do that so easily and so well during this pandemic because it's all focused on our home. And also, when we think, as Father Jose told us in his uh, homily this morning, it's a wonderful time to remember most of our families have special foods or recipes that are done only at this time of the year. And I would add to that, it's a wonderful time to have children participate in baking Christmas cookies. And you don't have to do this from scratch. Just get from the store that ready-made cookie dough and slice it up and widen the, the little things on the, on the cookie sheet pan and have the children afterwards decorate them. It's so simple, but they have a part in it. And that's one of the great things about Christmas, the, the old hymns and songs, I'm longing to be home for Christmas because Christmas is home because Jesus coming to birth was in a home away from his home in a manger in Bethlehem. So this longing to comfort our people, to comfort one another, especially with this new lockdown, is a marvelous way to reimagine and refocus our Christmas at home because our local domestic church is our family. We don't need to go anywhere. We don't need other people. All we need is ourself. And, and the more we can involve all the children of every age in this preparation, in this celebration, the more real then uh, our Christmas becomes and the words of Isaiah, comfort, oh comfort my people, takes place. Takes place. And why? because we are comforting each other with memories of past Christmases. We can do almost everything at Christmas as we've done before, except have too many people over. Everything else is based at home. Christmas is at home celebration. And so let us be creative in our own homes. Let us involve, especially the children, in all kinds of ways to help get ready for the Christmas season. And also, spiritually, we have to prepare ourselves and hopefully that we can help each other become better disciples of Jesus by comforting each other, by reaching out in words of comfort to friends who are ill, relatives, especially older people who need words of hope and encouragement. That is comforting our people. And so as we prepare now for the second week of Advent and get ready for the third and fourth, we're on this wonderful journey, all focused on our home, which is perfect because in this time, 
we can imagine Christmas past and maybe bring back some of those traditions that were so joyous and helpful for us to remind us the centrality of Christmas is the coming of Jesus in our world and in our lives. So beginning today, the days of this week, my friends, let us look for those little opportunities to comfort each other, to show care, respect, patience, understanding, and joy with one another. Comfort, oh comfort my people. And now let us renew our baptismal vows, our faith, by responding, I do, to these questions. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it with you in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now with confidence in God's marvelous promises to us over the ages, we now lift up our own needs, our own concerns. We pray especially during this time of COVID that each of us will see in our hearts glimmers of hope for the future, that our sacrifices of having to limit travel, limit contact, those little sacrifices help make up a, a new care and concern for each other and the concern of our community. For that intention, we pray to the Lord using the response, come, Lord Jesus, come. And we pray for all of those who are caring for the sick, our nurses, our doctors, all the support staff, all who are there giving themselves with such generosity in a heroic fashion, that the Lord Jesus will be there with them, strengthen, encouraging them, giving them comfort. And so we pray, come Lord Jesus, come. For all of those who are apart from loved ones this year, especially those who are separated by great distances, maybe even overseas, other parts of the country, who are not able this year to come in person, that they will still sense being part of their family and their home, and that we will reach out to them whatever way we can to involve them in our home. For all of those apart, we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. And we pray for all of those who have died recently or farther back, relatives and friends, loved ones, victims of COVID, that the Lord opens wide the gates of heaven for them we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. Our loving Father, you are the source of all comfort. Pour that out upon us. Draw us closer to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, oh. 
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Charles Borromeo, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us acknowledge that peace one to another. Peace, peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Jerusalem, 
Let us. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Just wanted to take a moment to go over a little bit of the announcements that we have for this week. As you know, this week starts our Marian celebrations, Immaculate Conception on December 8th, and it will be live streamed at 11 o'clock Mass here from our parish. But also just wanted to take a moment to invite you to go to stcharlesborromeochurch.org um, to look at all the schedule of Masses that we're going to be having for the next couple of weeks. As you know, we have entered a new chapter, I would say, in our, in our church, where a lot of things are unknown, whether this is going to happen or that's going to happen. So just take a, home, take a moment to go to our website, print that calendar, and if you can see, you know, where can you participate safely from home? Cardinal Mahoney was speaking about traditions and about, you know, comforting and about being there for each other. So one way that we can do is continuing to be safe from home. And also, if you choose to come over to our church, to the driving masses, please do so. Another thing that we wanted to talk to you about was, you know, this morning we had a wonderful moment, the right of acceptance of our brothers and sisters from the RCIA. It was really private at the piazza. And they came over and we prayed and we signed them with the sign of cross, marking our acceptance in helping them carry the cross. So some little moments of joy that are going on in our community, the right of acceptance, the Cub Scouts that got blessing uh, this morning because of their religious emblem, but just continuing little by little. So I know that if from our YouTube channel, you get emails when we have new events coming up. So this week we have Immaculate Conception, Our Lady of Guadalupe, and so on and so forth. So be safe, stay safe, and continue to take care of one another. Thank you, Cardinal. Thank you, Deacon. And thank you, Sony. And thank you at home for allowing us to go in your midst and pray with you in your domestic church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Join us December 10th from 9 a.m. to noon for the St. Charles Borromeo Holy Family Service Center's Telethon. Musical performances by Paul McCartney's guitarist, Grammy winner Lawrence Juber, Robbie Krieger of The Doors, internationally acclaimed violinists Lou Ann Holmesy and Anna Kostacek, Mike Campbell and The Dirty Knobs, Wind Beneath My Wings composer Jeff Silbar, Sharon Hendricks, Michael Damian, Rock On, and many others. Hosted by J.D. Mata, Spanish Choir Director at St. Charles Borromeo. The Service Center provides food, clothing, toys, and supplies for the needy in the community. To donate, please call 818-985-7365 or visit stcharlesborromeochurch.org forward slash donate. Come join us on the St. Charles YouTube channel December 10th from 9 a.m. to noon for St. Charles Borromeo Holy Family Service Center's Telethon.